Hello friends, this video on separation of substances part 3 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So we have discussed about a lot of separation techniques and we also saw that where each of these techniques would be suitable. So let us quickly have a look at some of the questions to, to ensure that the understanding is clear. So let's look at question number one. Why do we need to separate different components of a mixture? Give two examples. Now, this entire lesson we talked about the different separation processes. So, at the very beginning itself, I told you that why we want to separate different components. First, to remove undesirable substances. For example, when, when we cook rice, the rice grains might have tiny worms, it might have pebbles, so they are harmful for our body. So, to protect our body from all these harmful substances, what we do? The first step is to separate the undesirable components from the rice grains. The second need is to separate useful components which can be used separately. For example, why do we separate the tea leaves from the liquid tea? That's because the tea leaves can be separately used as a fertilizer to plants and the liquid tea can be separately used for tea consumption. So that means both the components have their own benefits separately and that's why we separate them. Question number two, what is winnowing? Where is it used? So winnowing is a separation technique where we separate heavier particles from lighter particles. And how do we do that? We make use of wind here. So the best, most common example where winnowing is used is to separate the grain seeds from chaff. So grain seeds from chaff. Chaff is nothing but the outer covering of the grain seeds. So they are very light in weight and the grain seeds are heavier. So when winnowing is done, the shaft being lighter, they are carried away by the wind and the grain being heavier, they fall back. So all the grains get collected here and all the shaft get collected in a separate heap. So that's how we can separate the grains from the shaft. Question number three, how will you separate husk or dirt particles from a given sample of pulses before cooking? So let's say you have the pulses along with it, you have dirt particles, you have husks. So how do you separate it? Now, when it comes to husks, they are lighter in weight. So you might say that you can separate the pulses from the husk by winnowing. But what about dirt particles? Because the dirt particles, they might be bigger in size, they might be smaller in size, but they will be as heavy as the pulses. So winnowing won't help in case of dirt particles. So the bigger pieces of dirt particles are best removed by hand picking. So we can actually pick them by hand because since if they are bigger, so they are easily visible and we can easily pick them up from the pulses. And the lighter husk particles, another way of separating, removing them is by washing with water. Now, when you wash the pulses with water, these lighter particles, since they are lighter, so they tend to float on the surface of water. So you just put some water on the bowl containing pulses and leave it undisturbed for some time. You will see that the husks will start floating on the surface of water and then by decantation that is by removing the water which contains the dirt particles as well you can get the clean pulses. So that's one way of removing the husk particles. Now why we didn't prefer winnowing is because the lighter husk particles may be very small in numbers. So, so such small numbers of husk particles can be better removed by sedimentation and decantation. Question number four, what is sieving, where is it used? So sieving is again a separation technique where particles of different sizes are separated from a mixture. So we use a sieve here which has uh, tiny pores and these pores will allow the tiny particles to pass through it and the bigger particles would be blocked. So most commonly it is used to remove impurities from wheat or flour. It is also used in pharmaceutical industry to ensure the right quality. That's because in pharmaceutical industry, you know, we make use of a lot of raw materials to make the medicines and it is very important that unwanted substances are not there. Different types of sieves are also available. The most common sieve which you see in your household is this sieve which is used to remove impurities from wheat or flour. So you can try it out yourself and you'll see that uh, it works. Question number five. How will you separate sand and water from a mixture? So when you talk about sand and water, sand is something which is insoluble in water. So when you mix 
when you allow the sand water mixture undisturbed to stand for some time what happens sand being heavier it settles at the bottom so that is what we call as sedimentation so you see the sand settles at the bottom and therefore what you can do is the water which is present here is the clean water so the clean water can be poured into another container so this process is called decantation so th this is how you can separate water from sand so container one will contain in the sand and container 2 will have the water question number 6 is it possible to separate sugar mixed with wheat flour if yes how will you do it so sugar and wheat flour if you compare their uh, size and texture what do you see the size wise the sugar particles are comparatively bigger in size because you know they have they are present in the form of crystals but wheat flour is in powdery form so their particle size is extremely small now so here the two components differ in their sizes so one best way to separate them is sieving because in sieving it allows the smaller particles to pass through so it will allow the wheat flour to pass through it and what would happen to the sugar particles so the sugar particles they would remain here so when all the wheat flour would have passed so only the sugar particles will remain here so that's how you can separate them question number 7 how would you obtain clear, clear water from a sample of muddy water now muddy water so these mud particles now if cannot pass through the fine pores of filter now you here you might say that okay decantation might also help but in decantation the problem is that some muddy particles might remain even in the upper layers of water so decantation would not be a very foolproof process to uh, get clear water from muddy water but filtration would be yes because here filter paper or the filter has extremely tiny pores so it will not allow even a single trace of mud to pass through it so that's how we will be able to get clean water so as you can see the filter is like very strict it will only allow the water to pass through it so obviously that's a better option thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.